Hello everybody, I recently switched to traditional grip and before I forget everything, all the struggles that I had learning this, and it's been about two months now, is try to impart all my knowledge of all the struggles that I had learning this that some of the videos missed because those guys are like freakishly good and they don't really think about this stuff anymore because they've forgotten it. it's been so long. So I wanted to make my own video here to try to help you guys out and let's see if you can learn from me. All right, a little forewarning here. I'm not the best drummer on the planet. I don't know exactly 100% if all these ideas are correct. If you're one of those actually people, um, I don't care. Just don't leave the comments like that. Uh, I'm not an expert. I've only been doing this, this traditional grip for two months, so give me a break, please. So let's continue. All right, here's a million dollar question. Why did I switch? Um, when I was in my 20s, when I, my early 20s, when I first learning was learning this, there was no YouTube back then. So I kind of was, was tempted to try back then, but I was really terrible at it. And I couldn't learn without a teacher, so I never really bothered. And then I went about 15 years without ever touching a drumstick until, you know, this past year. And I remember back when I was learning this stuff, I can never really do past like 150, 160 beats per minute playing 16th notes, single strokes. Uh, that was basically my limit back then. And I, I picked up drumsticks again here, in, you know, 15 years later. And I don't think I ever really considered the fact that maybe my hands weren't, have been my living for the last 20 plus years. They're now 40 years old and they're not flexible really at all. Uh, they've been damaged. I've broken this thumb here. It's bent permanently off to the right and it's not flexible. They're very strong at holding on things because that's really all I've been doing, riding bikes or I used to be a janitor, I used to mop. It's strong. It's not flexible really at all. So when I try to do this, try to imitate the motions that I've been using my hands for all my life, I can't really unlearn that. So what I decided here is to just change it up into something really weird that I've never done before. My hand has never ever been like this to do anything else. So that is why I bothered to learn. I mean, this is my right hand. I couldn't do like one tenth as good with my left hand. I could barely, I could barely do that. So it's been two months and just give yourself time. You need it. You'll get it, but you have to be patient. I'm going to briefly describe this in a, just an overview here, just at the beginning. And we are, and there's all over the place, and you can't see what's going on with that because that, that they're just freaks. So I had to figure out whether or not it was for fingers or it's for wrists. And I kind of figured out that it's both. All right, step number one is figuring out where to place the stick. There's a little bone. Let me see if I can get it on a camera here. There's a bone right here where my it's real skinny and then it widens out from my, my joint here. I want to put the stick in my hands in that little soft webbing spot and then kind of close my thumb just a little bit so that bone prevents it from, I'm pulling on this pretty hard, that bone prevents it from being able to slide out. But it, it's not so tight that I can't actually move the stick. I can, can't pull it out, but I can move the stick. You wanna to try to emulate that so that you create a nice cradle that's able to be able to wiggle without your stick flying out of your hand. It doesn't particularly matter at this point what part of the stick and where in relation. You're gonna figure that out for yourself. So don't try to get too focused on that because you're probably gonna change it. All right, now that you have it in your, in your hand, 
This whole thing is probably going to seem incredibly foreign to you. It's going to be very, very weird. All right, now that we've done the whole the, the floppy jobber here, the little the, the dolphin flop here, we're going to try to just use our thumb to dribble the stick inside this cradle. You might be really terrible at this, but it's, that's okay, because I was too. I was really bad. And I'm not that good at it now because I haven't tried this, you know, in, in about seven weeks. But just practice it really slowly. You might have to move your wrist a little bit, but. All right, the next part is discovering what your ring finger does. And I never really understood what it was supposed to do. Was it supposed to be like a flexible wall that it hits and creates a better rebound? Um, I don't think it really does that. Uh, it doesn't have to hit your finger, your ring finger every time it goes down. That's not necessary. It could come like this and never touch it if you're doing something fast like that. But what it does is raises the stick up when it's basically not necessary. And I think maybe the best explanation of this is let's do some double strokes, which is right, right, left, left. So you're going to be using your right hand and that during that time, your left hand is going to be doing nothing. So I don't want my stick down here. So see how I will use the end of their fingers. Uh, I see him, some people curl it up a lot and he kind of uses the knuckle. I kind of just, uh, I use the spot right about here. All right, here's just a little simple exercise that I just uh, thought of here. We are going to use our ring finger and we're going to use our thumb and we're going to use the wrist. So combine all these elements together. We're just going to thwop, thwop. And then once we hit the pad, we are going to let the stick rebound and we're going to use our ring finger to prop up the stick. Return it back to this position. Use your ring finger, thwop, thwop. And these muscles in your arm, probably not very developed yet. My arm really was quite sore at first. Let's introduce our index finger here. What I want you to do is just kind of wrap it over the stick, over the top. And I want you to just do whatever you do to get this thing going. Just let the stick bounce in between your two fingers. I'm trying to get this on camera so I don't know what I'm hitting. I'm looking at the screen over here and I'm hitting the drum head. Uh, just like that. Just try doing this. You're probably going to find out that this finger is not very strong as the stick's always going to win. And, but just try this. I don't know exactly how important this is, but I've seen other people teach it. So we're going to try to just drop the stick and then try to get it to continue bouncing by using our index finger. We're going to let it curl over the top and we're going to go down, 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 down. I, maybe it's because my finger's a little short. I mean, I couldn't do, I couldn't do anything. So don't feel bad. It's because it's going to take time. Remember, patience. All right, let's start with. Once you kind of get used to using your finger to dribble the stick with your index, let's place our thumb on top of our index finger. For me what it does is you got your fulcrum here and my index finger can go out a lot farther than my thumb can. And the further out you get on the stick the more leverage you have so you can have more power with less force. So what I kind of figured out is I dribble the stick with my thumb and my index finger basically at the same time. Now 
Now that you've kind of gotten the hang of introducing all of those uh, elements to your left hand, which is huge, by the way, this, you might be a month into this before you can even do this. We want to introduce our right hand and probably the easiest thing you can do is start out just by playing eighth notes with your right hand. One and two and for the first half of the measure, just your right hand, second half, both your left hand a little bit. So now we're just going to play some single strokes here. Which is great and all, but we're not really adding any accents and I can't really tell, or maybe you can't, if I'm playing sixteenths or triplets or eighth notes because there's really no frame of reference. There's no dynamics uh, to, to give it any sort of feel or any sort of musical quality, really. It just sounds like tap, tap, tap. So I'm going to introduce to you the molar technique. The molar technique is going to be great for uh, building your strength, for accents, and being able to play very lightly too. And what it, I think, largely does is allow you to play considerably faster with less effort. Uh, you get multiple strokes out of just a single one. So I think the best way to explain this, as I heard Jim Chapin say so in a video, is imagine you have uh, something really sticky and gooey on your hands and you just want to like shake it off. Ah, just do that. You're lifting up your arm. Ah, 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 just like that. So what we're trying to accomplish here is sort of a whipping motion. So it's down, whip, and you can just start with that as an exercise. Just get used to whipping and then nae, nae. No, just kidding. All right, we're going to introduce uh, triplets with our molar stroke. We are going to do a very heavy stroke. We're going to whip for our down stroke, and we're going to give it a little tap. And then as we lift up, it creates another stroke. So we get a bonus stroke out of it. And we're going to try this very slowly and very deliberately. I mean, we're not going to play like this, but we want to teach our muscles the correct way of doing this so that you don't have to think about it too much anymore. So we're going to do this very slow. We're going to whip and tap and we're going to lift. A good exercise for this, and if you're not trying this technique with your right hand, you should probably work on that as well, but is doing them in unison. So whip, tap, up. All right, so we can also have a little exercise here of just pair diddles, isolating our left hand, and you can move your your right hand off to your lap or something else so you can hear what your left hand sounds like and you can isolate it. Uh, we're gonna do right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So. All right, so. And we're gonna do our power stroke, two taps, and as we lift up, creates that, that little beat that between your right, left, right, right. So we're going to do some triplets here. And we're going to do the motor stroke with our right hand. And we're going to do the motor stroke with our left hand. And how they mix together, we're going to start with, uh, this is going to be single stroke uh, triplets. So. But our right hand is going to start out with our 
really strong tap and it's going to be right left right for the first uh, triplet here and where does this left hand start it's going to be the little tap as your lift your upstroke lift so heavy upstroke lift And that by, by the time your left hand comes back, it's going to be the second beat of our triplet. So, triplet. So that's how they kind of jive together. I mean, you can mix it around too, but this is probably the easiest way to learn it. Here's a good exercise. We're going to do the same thing with triplets. Well, we can do a measure of just straight single strokes and then we can trade off just doing isolating one of our hands. So For our double strokes, we really want to drive it into the pad for our left hand. And we don't want the second one to be extremely sad. We want them to be both equal or close to equal in volume. So we're this is a good exercise just to sit here and just do this. So that by the time you come back to doing doubles, your body is trained to do this without having a sad second double. So for paradiddles, we're gonna to have to get used to doing four strokes with just one using the molar method. So we're gonna do a heavy down and then two taps and then our upstroke to create that bonus tap. Just like so. And where does your left hand come into this as far as the, the heavy in downstrokes and upstrokes? And by the time it gets around, our heavy stroke is going to accent the, the second beat of the measure. And you can apply it with our our uh, doubles, double technique to the second part of our left, right, left, left. To try to get them a little bit more, uh, more equal in volume. So that concludes this video and I hope you found it very informative. And maybe if it's not 100% correct, you found some things that are mostly correct. And I gave you a number of things to work on. And I've enjoyed making this and I wish you good luck in your drumming.